Hey guys, so today I want to talk about Anthem, and no, before I get questions, I'm not leaving Battlefield 5, don't worry, I just want to check out other games that EA is currently publishing and what those have to offer. Especially considering that, in fact, I did have an opportunity to play Anthem back in June of 2018, which is around, what, 7 months ago at this point, at the time of me publishing this video? And I have to honestly admit, I didn't expect Anthem to come out as good as it is right now. And it's not the irony, I'm not kidding, I'm really surprised. We all know that recently, in the past couple of years, there is this trend where or maybe not a trend, but the whole gaming market actually changed and majority of the games are now released in an unfinished state where they get the live service and they will be updated along the way, meaning it will actually be finished along the way, couple of months after the game gets released, it will be in a playable state and after that there will be some additional content. Well, with Anthem, as much as I cannot judge the actual content yet, because I only got to play the demo, which is fairly limited, but when it comes to the actual game, as in game mechanics and the actual core gameplay of the game, such as movement, flying mechanics, usage of all of those skills, customization of your javelins, although the customization isn't probably the part of core gameplay, but it does work. And more importantly, it is very satisfying to play. But before we go further into explaining what you can actually do in Anthem and how you can play it with friends, what are the different types of things you can do within the game, I want to give you a general explanation of what is the world of Anthem and what is the general idea behind it, because it tends to be quite confusing. The title Anthem comes from the name of the source of the pure creation that gods used to create the whole world within the game. Before they could finish creating it though, they vanished, and thanks to that, we have an unfinished world with different beasts, monsters, and everything you will encounter throughout the game. In short, when the gas disappeared, the power of Anthem was unleashed and it messed up the whole world. And because of that, humanity created javelins, the exosuits that give you superhuman abilities. It's kind of like Iron Man, to be honest. They were passed down from generation to generation, and only a small amount of people actually have access to those. And those people are called freelancers. This is why everyone in the game refers to you as a freelancer, pretty much. General population lives in a city, and, as I mentioned, only a handful of people have access to javelins, which allow them to travel outside of it. So, essentially the whole game is based around you getting a mission in a city, and then going on to complete it in an open world. Now, I don't quite want to judge this aspect of the game just yet, because the demo didn't really offer that much, so it's quite hard to actually have a proper assumption of what the full game will be, since we had around 3 to 4 different missions available, which doesn't really offer us enough playtime to judge the whole game. But, the more important stuff, you can play the game with 3 friends, so you can all team up, complete all of the missions together, all of them. You can play together in the storyline, I mean the so-called single player, or I don't know, a storyline. You can play the free play together and also you can play strongholds with them. So every single aspect of the game is available to play with your friends. I know this might be obvious to someone playing Warframe or someone who played Destiny, but it wasn't to me. I'll admit I haven't played either of those, so yeah, I was quite new, it's my first game of this type, so I'd rather explain all of it in case someone actually doesn't know this. And I suppose some people don't, so yeah, there it is. So far, all of the missions I've played in the demo are based around you getting something for someone or you going out to the open world to actually save someone from something because they messed up or they went somewhere they shouldn't go and... The way you do it is essentially by going into some weird place where you have tons of monsters you have to defeat, then you go further, you progress, you get bigger monsters which have more HP and are more difficult to defeat, you end up with a big bad boss you have to take out and you complete the mission. While it might sound quite boring on, on a... not on paper, in a video, during a voiceover, it's actually super fun to do with friends, once you actually have 
friends that you're playing together with on Discord, TeamSpeak, some other stuff you guys have on consoles, but it's actually super fun once you do it with friends. Playing with randoms, it is only irritating. 99% of people have no clue what they're doing or what they're supposed to do, even though it actually displays all of the information on the screen, they will not read it, they will just clueless you run around and not even help you once you get taken out, so I wouldn't really bother playing with randoms. As you progress throughout the game by leveling, at the end you will have access to 4 different javelin types. Each of them is different. Once you pick your favorite javelin, you can customize it towards what you like the most and also in a way where you will be able to support your team with their types of javelins. I'll be honest here and I'll admit, I feel like I haven't played the game enough at this point to fully judge how much of team play actually is there when it comes to customizing individual javelins and making them work together. I don't know if it actually is that big of a deal or not that big of a deal. I suppose it would be, but unlocking, leveling and in general progressing with your javelin actually takes a bit of grinding and I didn't have time to do enough of it in the 10 hours I played in during the demo. However, the individual customization of each javelin without making sure it actually works with other javelins of your teammates is really impressive. You can customize the looks of it, you can customize the upgrades, you can customize the weapons, you can customize the special abilities, so pretty much everything can be replaced with a different thing. Now, when it comes to weapons, you can actually craft those too. You can craft capabilities, or maybe not capabilities, but craft upgrades for your exosuit. So there is really a lot of stuff that can be done within the customization system. As I've already mentioned it throughout the video, Anthem's core gameplay is really fun and engaging to play. I was really positively surprised how fluid and how well it was designed. I personally didn't really encounter any bugs or glitches in the 10 hour playtime I got with Anthem. And I know it might sound too good to be true, but please keep in mind, I've only played for 10 hours and majority of the bugs and glitches, they tend to come out after a bit longer playtime. You play the game for a while, you get used to it and you start seeing the problems. Although it works much better than what Battlefield 5 had to offer at the release and what it still has to offer in its current state, at least in my opinion. And while I know it's quite weird to compare those two because they're not really alike, still, they're both games, they're both released and they were... well, at least one of them was unfinished. One big problem which I have to mention though is that I had a pretty big problems with frame rate and optimization of the game. I don't know if it's specific to my PC and it's only my problem, but I did have quite a lot of FPS drops, which well, didn't really provide the best experience. But then again, it could be only specific to me, so don't get scared away by it, especially if you have a strong PC setup or you have a console, because this game is probably gonna be pretty well optimized for consoles, as it usually tends to be with all of the games. Well, at least to the point where it's possible with the hardware of the current generation of consoles, but you guys know what I mean. So to summarize the whole video, I really enjoyed playing Anthem. It's something completely new to me, I haven't played Warframe, I haven't played Destiny either, so it was a really new experience, really refreshing after playing Battlefield 5 for the last 3 months pretty much every single day. So yeah, now I'm waiting for Anthem to release. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be putting out more videos from it before the game actually comes out, but I will definitely put something out once it releases. It comes out on the February 15th for the Origin Premier Access members, or EA Access if you're on console, and it releases on the February 22nd, so a week after the premiere release, for everyone who purchased the standalone game in the pre-order. So yeah, till then I guess, with Anthem of course, not with the whole channel and all of the videos, but yeah, as always. If you enjoyed, remember to leave a like, subscribe and... Wait, I don't see you on the battlefield, I see you on Anthem, I guess, so yeah, see you on Anthem!